You talked a lot this past week about all the praise of Trips coming and how he was so creative offensively. Did you kind of take inspiration from that coming into this game? But there was a lot of creativity with your offense. Uh, no, try to put our players in the best position to win. Point blank, I felt like, you know, our, our matchups were at the skill position at running back. So, you know, let's try to get our, our matchups, you know, in those spots. And uh, ironically, Coach Marv mentioned, he was joking around. He's like, well, Jim, I believe Jim Fossil uh, was the OC of Utah. Wherever the OC of Utah was in like 1970 something when Coach Marr was at uh, New Mexico State, they actually ran the swinging gate multiple times. So I Googled it, we found it on YouTube, and they were running normal passing plays with the swinging gate in football cyclical. So I'm like, all right, well, if this guy was an NFL head coach and then Hugh Jackson can do it with the Bengals, right, in the Browns, then why can't we do it here? And, uh, you know, it just put our players in the best position to be successful. Kudos to the players for believing in something that's unique and goofy and not just saying, oh, coach doesn't think we can win, but saying, man, we believe in what they're doing and going to execute. When did that happen? Uh, Monday night, Tuesday, somewhere. I think Tuesday, or Tuesday actually, it was Tuesday. We practiced Tuesday and then Tuesday, I uh, just talked, I just watched those fire breathing dragons on the D line again. And I said, holy cow. I mean, there's a reason they're number one in the country in sacks, number one in the country in almost TFLs, or not sacks, but pressures on the quarterback. And it was like, man, do we really want to play 70 snaps where these guys just try to kill our quarterback? And the answer was no, we did not. So how did it actually function compared to what you thought it would do? I thought it actually did exactly what I thought it would do. I thought it would create two on twos. And we'd be able to get out there, we'd get all of their defensive line away from the ball, and not have to block them. And then we'd get all their other players. And I felt like we had really good matchups with everybody else in the field. The other, the other six guys in the field, six were six, but we were good. And they did some things, bailing their, their linebacker out and playing games with our two man game to the boundary. And that was their answer. And I'm gonna have to have an answer for that next week because that was a pretty good answer in terms of what our, our combat to that is. Well, well, what about them having an answer? Is this something that's impossible to do on the fly at the offense when you presented them? Not impossible, but it's just numbers. We have an answer for different, you know, if you put your people here, we're doing this. Put your people here, we're doing this. Put your people here, we're doing this. So we do have, like, it's it's sound. Like, it looks goofy and unique and different, but we didn't just go out there and run something that wasn't sound. It's just different. And you got to be, you can't be scared to be different. And if you're scared to be different, and I told, I, I thought I told Somebody the other day, or it may have been our media the other day after practice, a lot of people may not like what I do. It may be goofy, but I could really give a crap because I'm trying to put our players in the best position to win based off where we are as a football team right now. And really in the first half, I mean, we got essentially got a touchdown call back and then we do an interception in the, inside the, the 20. I mean, we should have had another 13 points, 10 points on the board in the football game versus a really, really good defense. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we got delayed games with 23 seconds left in the clock because we were snapping the ball. We were giving our cadence, and they were ca calling our center for basically a false cadence, an unnatural movement, even though he was doing it all game. So uh, I get it. I understand. They thought he was being more dramatic, and their guys were jumping off sides, and they were calling it on us. Uh, you know, I'll have to watch the tape, but for the most part, you know, a lot of I, I like a, a lot of the officials that were on the field. You know, most of them, uh, I really, really enjoyed. Jenny, in terms of the matchups and trying to even out in terms of numbers, was that one of the ideas behind that swinging gate that looked like one of the draws? I think it looked like Ryan Lynch in there. Well, the yeah, I mean, that was more of an adjustment to what they they were doing. So we had a plan that if they weren't going to play Trenton, that we were going to be able to shovel pass. It, I mean. There was a soundness to it. It's not just go out there and hope it works. All right, that wasn't the plan. The plan was go out there, and if they move, I'm not gonna go into the complete plan, but there was a plan. <laughs> I don't want Dan, I mean, Dan's gonna kill me now. Coach Lanning, that is. He's probably calling me right now, my phone's vibrating. But, because uh, uh, that's obviously we got next week. So he's gonna have, you know, that's my guy. How about you? Moments. Talk to our guys all the time. Great teams win moments. Good teams win moments. Right? You win plays. You have to win plays. Every play matters. But there's going to be moments in a game that separate winners from losers. 
Fourth downs are those moments. We converted our fourth and five with the game on the line. If we didn't convert that, guess what every question here would be right now? Why didn't you kick the field goal to go up six? Well, why the heck would you want to go up six? Right, what does that do? It just makes the team want to score a touchdown and beat you, right? But that's what I would be answering right now. But our guys made the play in the moment. And on defense, we made the plays in the critical moments. And that's what I'm proud of, because that's what I've been harping to the guys. And uh, they're just competitors. So, Coach, I was trying to like a game like this, obviously, where you put an offense in, like you said, but why could it not? But just for him to stay focused and not to get out of rhythm. What do you think of his performance overall? Trenton's, <laughs> you're not going to rattle Trenton. You could you could spin Trenton around, make him dizzy, throw him out there, and he's going to find a way to, to do what he's supposed to do and, and regain his balance. So uh, Trenton's, uh, I told Trenton earlier in the week, I'm like, hey, bud, this is going to be unique, but we can't put you back there for 65 snaps. We put you back there for 65 snaps, not 100%. This isn't, this isn't going to be fun. So we're going to do some unique things. We're going to line up in Wildcats to keep you healthy. We're going to line up in some weird stuff. And uh, he believed in it. And uh, like I said, that's a credit to the players, credit to where we're going as a program, that our players, they didn't waver when we have weird ideas. They said, okay, if you believe this is best, we're going to do it. And that's what I'm most proud of. They went out there, they executed, they worked hard. On defense, we battled, we competed, we won the moments. We responded to an ass whooping we got, butt whooping, sorry. I don't know if that's a bad word, uh, the other day, and we responded. And that's what culture is, is response, response, response. And we did that today. Coach, what was the process of coming up with like a play or drawing in the notebook and this doesn't work How do you come up with this? I don't want to block him. So if I move him there, do they move their guy there? That was it. That was the process. And then we saw one clip of that. And I said, well, worst we can do is line up in it once. And if they do it, then we don't got to block their fire breathing dragons. So let's just see if it works. And that was the process, was as simple as that. It's not rocket science. It's not even rocket surgery, right? How valuable is it for your players seeing the messaging and everything kind of works? Like, does it give an extra sort of uh, understanding on their behalf, do you think? I, I believe that, they, that they, they're slowly believing that we're going to compete to win, regardless of what it takes. And people ask me all the time, well, where are you at in a program right now? Are you trying to play the young guys and get them reps? And are you building for the future? Yeah, we're building for the future. But we're trying to win every game, right? You know, I'm not going to line up and do this, this crazy stuff if I just want to get good at the things that we're going to do in the future of the program. Because guess what, guys? In three years from now, if we're running the swinging gate, I shouldn't be here, right? Unless it's unique. If we run it 20 times, there's a problem. It means I didn't recruit well enough. It means I didn't build culture. I didn't get the guys stronger, and we didn't do it right. But right now, this was the best chance for us to win the football game, and it's my job to put our guys in the best chance to win the football game. Whether it's unique, crazy, a little weird, that doesn't matter to me. I'm trying to win football games. Defensively, you had the three, four, four the short stop. What were some of the keys you feel like kind of led to getting those stops? I thought, one, we had a good plan, and then two, Deshaun Mallory. <laughs> uh, so one good plan, two to Sean Mallory. And uh, our guys just, they executed. They knew what was happening. We got a beat on the formations early defensively. And uh, they did a nice job. What does a guy like Mallory provide to this defense? Oh, a fight, compete. I mean, that's a kid who coming to Arizona State has changed his life. Oh, it really has. He, he didn't play at Michigan State. They didn't really want him. He transfers to Arizona State. Nobody knows who he is. And literally, he's going to get probably drafted now, right? His, he came here as the most quiet kid you could ever imagine, right? He didn't didn't really know who he was. Now he's out there smiling. He found himself. Literally, him coming here changed his life. Coach, talk about the trust you had in Cam's passing ability. I mean, third and ten inside, where uh, I can't remember the exact one. I think that's a thirty. I mean, to trust him on that play, uh, you had to have you know an immense amount of confidence in his passing ability. The week. Yeah, we practiced it and it worked. So I'm like, you know what? No risk it, no biscuit, Bruce Arians. <laughs> In order for Scott O'Leary to look more important to this offense, I think he's going to have to play defense this whole offseason. So what, how important is he in this whole, this whole thing? Don't, I hope he doesn't play defense. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's super important. His versatility, um, his work ethic, his, his will to win, his will to compete. And uh, that's really what separates Scott from most people is he's just, he's an ultimate competitor. Coach, um, you kind of talked about Cam, we've all talked about Cam and what he's done, but what can you speak on Jalen's performance today and how he also stepped up in some of those critical moments you're talking about? Yeah, so everybody knows we challenged Jalen early in the year. 
It was, it was known, right? He came back the last two weeks, and he had one of the best run blocking for any tight end in the nation. Back-to-back -back weeks. What does that show? Your best players are starting to believe in what's necessary to win. And even though last week didn't turn out, he still got better. That's why I said we still got better even with uh, the performance from last week. And then you come back today, and he built that trust back up, back up with how he blocked. To say, you know what, we're going to line up a Wildcat because you were a – or Hellcat because you were a quarterback <laughs> in uh, high school. And he went out there. He executed. He did it right. The only play we didn't execute, I called wrong. So 100% my fault. And uh, it was why we took a, took a sack there. It was my fault, not theirs. Other than that, our guys are not there and executed. But I got to be better because I can't put a non-quarterback in there where I call a play backwards and we put him in position to fail. So that's on me. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that everybody should watch our team and say is they've got fight. And the one thing that when I took the job and I called people, what do you want to see ASU be? What do you want to see ASU be? It's funny, everybody says, we just want them to, to complete and play hard. We just want them to play hard or plan hard. So don't 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 say you want something. And then when we get and we do it, be upset, right? We're playing hard. The result hasn't always been there, but our guys are playing hard. And like I said, the result of last week was on me. I had to do a better job building this culture right. Those games aren't won in a weekly game plan. You don't go and run Swinging Gate versus Utah and win the football game, right? Those are culture games that take years to beat those teams, right? But our guys this week, they battled, they responded, and it's just everything that I'm trying to build here is those fans being there, clapping at the end of the game, showing the support. Uh, Sun Devil Stadium should be rocking the last two games. Uh, show our guys support that these guys aren't going to quit, that these guys are going to fight. And more importantly, show these guys support to the guys who can come back next year that, holy cow, we can sell this place out. This environment can be unbelievable. Use these next two weeks to sell our players that can return on why they should return. Can they post out a Yeah, I don't think I did, uh, to be honest. I thought our players made plays. Uh, I thought our defense played really well. I thought our offense played really well. Uh, I think I have so much respect for Chip Kelly. I mean, that guy's been there and done everything that I hope to accomplish in my career. Uh, and I have a lot of respect for him. He's an innovator of the game. Uh, and, you know, I, 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 I don't think that happened. I personally believe our players just went out there tonight and they won their one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And our defense won the moments, and that's what won us the football game. Coach, what did it feel like after the game to run back into the tunnel with all the visiting fans chanting the answer? Felt good. Yeah. I mean, sorry. It's just a quick answer. It felt good. Obviously, you've been switching sides around. How much of the players kind of the mindset of the role when UCLA last time? How do you think you're going to handle the emotions and the environment of the role this time? Competed. It was the quietest locker room we had pregame all year. And I, I stood there and I'm like, oh, gosh. You know, are we ready to play? And then I start to look at what the guys are doing and they're looking at their tips and alerts. And I'm like, oh, all right. Maybe we're just locked in. And uh, it was funny because that's what Coach Ward told me. I'm like, are we ready? He goes, well, look at what they're looking at. They're looking at their tips. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see. Maybe we'll be detail-oriented today and go get a dub.